them with some poison in a gel this gel this green stuff is just green cordial okay so it's not poisonous if this was red it's got poison but this for the demonstration it's green it's, it's safe and uh, the gel comes out and it's just like a syringe for, for medicine just it's pretty standard what we've got here it's got it's got four different eyes each one of these eyes are looking straight out this way if this eye here sees something and this eye here sees something, then <coughs> if you imagine <coughs> you're a cat, it's looking at the rump and the shoulder of the cat and it thinks, okay, there's a cat there. If it was over here and only this eye sees something, it could be anything. Only when this one and this one are both seeing something at the same time, exactly that second, it thinks it's a cat. But if this eye down here can see something, that means it's, it can't get between the legs. There's something else. It might be a fat animal like a wombat or a koala or a, maybe a nintaka or something with a big low bit. Echidna. Echidna is a very good one. <coughs> Australian animals have got short legs. Cats and foxes have got long legs. So this eye here, at the same time that this eye and this eye are seeing something, this one down here is not allowed to see something. It has to be looking between the legs. And if that happens at exactly that time, out of this hole in the middle here, it, it fires this, this poison. But it's got an eye up the top here. This is the most important eye on the whole machine. If this eye sees anything at all, the whole machine goes to sleep for 60 seconds. It can't work. If this eye, if, if when Gregory was walking past before, this eye would have seen his knee and it would have fallen, it would have gone to sleep for a minute. If a Toyota goes past, if a, a Malu kangaroo goes past, Kipara with a tall head goes past, Emu, it, it won't fire. A dog, dog's head, if it's an adult dog, it won't fire because this one turns the whole machine off. So it must be this one and this one seeing something, this one and this one not seeing something at exactly that time, and then it fires. <laughs> that was a perfect speed, I reckon, for a cat. That's where we want to hit him. Right here. So the cat, the cat would run away under that tree somewhere, and it's got all this sticky stuff in his fur. Lick it off, go away somewhere, and die. And this already, hear it? It's getting ready. It's getting ready to go again. So this is designed just to, it plays a loud call at seven o'clock at night. And then every 15 minutes it plays a quiet one just for just for 10 seconds. But yeah, it's just it's all software, you can get it to and we, we get it to play lures one night, then be quiet the next night, then play lures the next night, play a different lure. And that's all recorded on the memory stick. So people say what's what's the best lure? Well I think the best lure will be different in different habitats at different times of the year for different cats. We're working on a couple of different things like this as well, they're in the pipeline. One is, it can read a microchip on a cat or a, or an, a radio frequency tag on a cat. So you can put them just outside towns or in, in parks, national parks near towns where they've got cat curfews and it will read the tag of it. And if it's, a, if it's a registered cat, it won't fire, but it will record the information. And then you can, then the pest person from the, you know, or the, you know, the dog and cat management person from the council can just go and download it and say, ah, oh, I know, Twiggles the cat was out in this national park. I'm going to go around and give you a hundred dollar fine, or you know something like that. Um, so there's that, and another another technology we want to aim put into them too is is remote downloading. So you can sit back at your computer wherever you are, and and rangers can do that and they say, oh, it's fired five times. Even download the photographs. This is what it's got. We've got to put. Oh, we're starting to see bilbies now. Um, in remote locations where you've got fence reserves, you can use them on both sides of the fence. If a cat or fox does get in, it might be able to get it, but you can, you can control the numbers outside. So it has a range of, range of options, um, but yeah, I've got to stress, it's just one of the tools. Um, you know, we've got, there's a whole lot of other things. We've got to manage foxes, we've got to manage weeds, we've got to manage fire. Well, the RSPCA, um, it's interesting you ask that question. RSPCA aren't really keen on 1080, um, but 
as, as a concept, they're much more keen on this than, than baits because it's far more discriminatory. So um, it's also arguably ethically a lot better than having a cat caught in a leg hole trap or caught in a cage trap. And even, even if you think you trap a feral cat or, and you take it to the RSPCA to have it humanely put down, you've got this cat scared in a cage trap, hanging upside down, spitting and hissing and carrying on. Whereas this is, you know, it, it's never held at all. It's never, it hasn't got that stress. Um, so yeah, it has some, has some benefits. So yeah, Bitter Jones is quite keen on the concept. She'd, she'd like another toxin. And these, design, these have been designed, um, they're the machinery. What, what you put in here is totally up to, you know, what chemists can come up with. So if we can, if, if PAP is deemed to be better, or if, if other toxins are, are deemed to be better, then they could all be incorporated. It's just, it's just the technology of delivering the, delivering the dose.